Gearhead327. I want to show you guys some of my project right here, and this is the beginnings of an engine test run stand. So this is something I've always wanted. I've got several engines that I'm building right now, and it's going to be a lot easier to break them in and test them on a run stand than it is going to be able to put them in the vehicle and then hope there's no issues later on. So, all right. Well, anyway, that's what I got. I was going to take you guys along. This is some. Um, 3 16 2 by 2 steel tubing. This is 14 gauge right here. This is quarter inch. That's an old bell housing right there. And I've got some various other pieces here I'm working on. So, well, let's uh, let's uh, let's get this tacked up and kind of get it, you know, sort of looking like an engine test run stand. I want to show you a little bit of progress I've made here. I pretty much got the base frame ready to go. Um, you can see some of the welds this stuff needs to be cleaned up but um, I've got to put some of these over there and my what I want to do is have this stuff slide in right here and be able to pull out that way I only have this frame to deal with I can uh, store this if necessary it doesn't take up all that room so anyway but that's how how it's coming all right I got those uh, parts painted I've still got to roll it over and do the other side that is drying right now so we'll let that uh, dry and then we'll hit the other side. But anyway, guys, that's as far as I can go right now until we move to the next stage. Well, she's starting to come together now. But what I did is I measured the center here and I measured from here to here. I've got that C clamped on there and that's 22 and 3 eighths. And the same thing from here. I measured from here to the center 22 and 3 eighths. And yeah, that needs some work right there. but. Uh, I need to figure out where the bell housing is going to bolt to this and then where exactly those uh, motor mounts are going to line up here. So that's what I'm trying to do now. All right, I'm showing you the progress as it happens. Um, this is an old 305 block that I got out of a Z28. I've got it mocked up here and you can see how it's, uh, how it's on there. And I've got the uprights and all that stuff so it's removable. And it will break down and won't take up so much room. Uh, maybe this is a little bit overkill right here, but um, it, it, it will be adjustable. I can move it, change it for other engines as they come, but for right now it's made for a small block Chevy. Uh, I've got some hoses I got from LKQ. I think both of those were just a little over $7. That is an old radiator that uh, was in the Jeep. It uh, doesn't leak, but um, I didn't have to buy it. So. I'm going to be fabbing that up there. We're trying to get that radiator going and hopefully we can change over to another engine and get it started. So, but anyway, this is the uh, progress as it happens. All right, well, we've moved a little farther along here. Um, one thing I didn't take into consideration when building the uh, engine stand, test stand, is that it would fit between my uh, lift here. And I had to uh, pull the, fortunately, those things pulled out a little wider and I could get around here when I did it originally I couldn't get close enough to it to lift the thing up here and put it on but I've got this that's where the radiator is going to be mounted and just got a little more work to do so all right guys well that's that's how it's coming I want to show you guys my uh, homemade built from scratch test run stand for my engines I've got uh, everything put together there and I've kind of been economical about it. There's some uh, some pieces and scraps were used uh, like these customized radiator hoses uh, that came out of a junkyard and this this was new. This is for 77 Z28 and I pieced that over there. And the reason it's pieced guys is because that radiator is out of the Jeep and it doesn't line up with a small block Chevy. Um, but everything uh, is holding up. I've, uh, I've had to use these uh, original exhaust manifolds here because uh, those block hugger headers that I'm going to use on the Jeep, they fit on this side, but they don't fit on this side over here. They hit the, uh, the clamshell, the engine mounting bracket. So I can either grind that or I can buy a different style of um, engine mount, which I'll probably end up buying a different style of engine mount. But these... Um, Exhaust, exhaust manifolds will be good enough for you know a break-in so and I've got some more electrical to do here uh, this is right down to the uh, homemade 
battery cables. So if you can make your own battery cables, yeah, they aren't pretty. I can wrap some tape around them. I guess pretty them up a little bit, but it will save you a little bit of money. The big holdup on getting this thing started is a carburetor. I ordered a carburetor two months ago, and it's still on back order. I um, I have some old junky carburetors, and I ordered a uh, rebuild kit for one of those, and that's still on back order too. But I didn't want to throw a crappy carburetor up there, one of my crappy ones. on you know uh, an engine on especially on a first run so uh, I've got um, an old HEI right here we're gonna throw that on there I need to clean that up and I've got a um, tachometer but I've got the starter mount and like I said she's pretty much ready to go the big holdup is the carburetor I've got a marine fuel tank here I'm gonna feed the, um, the motor with some of y'all will recognize that as a Ford relay for a start relay. But I'm going to use that fan right there and put this right here. I don't have a conventional fan on here or electric fans, but that, that will work for uh, testing purposes. So, all right, guys. Well, this is going to be part one. Part two, uh, I've got some switches that are going to come in. And we will, and when my carburetor comes in, we will, we will do a uh, start up and a break in. So, okay. Gearhead 327.